Join me now for the political analysis of the fallout of Lee Anderson's comments on my show on Friday. It's political commentator Benedict Spence. Benedict, welcome to the show. So now the Tories are revolting again, this time over Lee Anderson's comments. Um, he issued a statement to GB News earlier. He is saying he will not apologise. It's a sign of weakness. And it was made clear over the weekend in Bennett that if he did apologise, he would be allowed back into the Conservative Party. He would get the whip. What do you think should be done? I mean, Sadiq Khan has called the comments vile, racist and Islamophobic. But I've been speaking with Lee. And he told me in no uncertain terms his his inbox is bursting at the seams with red wall voters who agree with what he said. What's your take? Well, that's the thing, isn't it? I think probably Lee Anderson might agree that his, I think he has said that his words were a little clumsy, but actually what is being inferred from them is not, I think, at all the case. And I think once again, it's sort of an example of quite how people can be browbeaten into you know, not speaking their minds simply with allegations of Islamophobia. And I think it's rather interesting now that, you know, having gone through the furore of the Labour Party uh, ripping up convention ostensibly uh, in the House of Commons on the basis that uh, MPs were feeling threatened, that almost like sort of Stockholm syndrome, they managed to turn this round and go, oh, no, actually, Islamophobia is the major problem. And here is this one example. And this mm -hmm. means we're going to be able to completely kick this story out of the news cycle and focus on something else. And now you have Annalise Dodds and other Labour MPs coming out and saying that once we're in power, we're going to change the definition of what Islamophobia is to make it incredibly difficult to criticise any aspect of this uh, of this religion, including aspects that are very deeply problematic. And I think ultimately, Lee Anderson probably feels rather frustrated, perhaps to a degree that, that it just happened like that. But I think a lot of ordinary people will feel very frustrated as to whether or not the Tories can now return the whip. Um, on, on the basis of an apology. Well, it depends what it's for. If he says, I didn't mean to be uh, you know, uh, Islamophobic, um, but there are some very real issues that I think need to be addressed, and this is perhaps what I should have said. Okay, fine. But actually, if what they're asking him to do is basically lie and say, no, you, you say you don't actually think that these things are important. Well, I don't think that's in his interest, and I also don't think it's in the interest of the Tory party to sort of back down in the face of a Labour onslaught. This was a Labour story, actually, about how their MPs were feeling bullied by protesters. Why is it now that that has been allowed to be supplanted in the news cycle by the very people, some of the very people, at least, uh, who the original story was about. Yeah, do you think that is um, a bit of a problem? Um, in a sense, the Labour Party were on a back foot, the SNP were on a back foot, it's all those disgraceful scenes which in another country would be called an insurrection, but yet here they weren't. It affected the votes. We've seen disgraceful scenes over the weekend. In fact, Benedict, I'm talking to a councillor at 5.30 who was in that meeting in Stoke that was stormed by the protests, and yet here we are. Um, has Lee Anderson allowed the conversation to go back, if you like, into safe territory for the Labour Party? I th I, that's what frustrates me about this, is that whatever Lee's intentions, ultimately it has been allowed to be spun a certain way. And I think that he knows, you know, he's been in politics a while now, he knows as well as anybody, you do have to be very careful about your language because people will try to spin it any which way. But you're right to highlight the fact that, you know, what is now being spoken about is the danger of Islamophobia and the danger of the far right. It's always the far right. You know, that you just thought they'd been tired out by now, given that they've been on the march across Europe and this country for about 15 years and never actually got to their destination. But that's always what the issue is. Not, as you've just pointed out, people harassing MPs outside of Parliament, people beaming genocidal slogans illegally onto the side of Parliament, not breaking up council meetings. Why is it that we're not talking about that and we're instead talking about Lee Anderson? It's because nobody wants to address the very thorny issue, which is that in a lot of communities, actually, Gaza... As a, as, a, as a singular topic, but also political Islam as a sort of a broader topic has taken root in some communities, not all, in some areas. And it is a, it is a major vehicle. It is a major driving force. And actually, when people talk about the danger of the far right, I always think you will get the far right if you continue to insist on ignoring these other very proactive uh, movements. Far-right activism is very reactive. It needs something to react to. So whenever I hear people talking about the dangers of far-right rhetoric, I think, well, let's think where it's coming from. It's because there is a lot of uh, you know, quite controversial uh, uh, political Islam in this country, and it is simply swept under the rug, and it is not addressed. That is how you will get from A to B.
And Benedict, um, obviously Lee's comments, he will admit himself, as usual, about as subtle as a note tied to a house brick <laughs> and flung at you. Nevertheless, we're having an important conversation on me. And don't you think it's, it's slightly through the looking glass that Annalise Dodds, who was harassed at a meeting, Angela Rayner harassed on the streets by pro-Palestine protesters, Sakir mm. Starmer chased off a train in Scotland by pro-Palestinian protesters, Rachel Reeves harassed on the streets. The Labour Party are getting the thick end of this too, and yet they seemingly cannot grasp the nettle and deal with what's actually driving it, and instead they're blaming Lee Anderson and the mythical far right. Well, that's why I describe it as almost like Stockholm syndrome, is that rather than actually confront this head on, it's almost like they're trying to turn around to the people that they feel threatened by and say, no, 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 we're on your side. Please don't hurt us. You know, saying to the crocodile, please eat us last uh, because we're actually on your side, guys. Uh, trust us on this. Um, and I think it's a bit of a losing battle uh, because this is also, let's be clear, this is not just about... Islamism. It's also about the far left. For the far left, uh, for which religion is not the issue, Gaza is a hot topic on the idea of anti-colonialism. And we can, yeah, another day perhaps we can get into the lunacy of that, but it's a twin-pronged approach. It's not simply about one aspect. They're getting it from two different dimensions in their own electorate. And what they fail to understand is these people will never side with them. These people will never forgive them, actually. As much as anything else, they won't forgive Labour centrists for the role the Labour Party played in both Iraq and Afghanistan. That's something that they don't seem to think, uh, to grasp. And they just think, as long as we're nice to these factions, one day they'll, they'll sympathise and they'll be nice to us. And it's a fool's errand. They will never stop pushing the centre of the Labour Party further to the left to kowtow to them on these issues.